My name is Tom Bernacki, and I'm going to show you the top five right here guaranteed ways to get rid of outside of the foot pain. So right here, you got your pinky toe, your Taylor's bunion, your outside of the foot, your styloid process, and the outside of your ankle, and even outside the plantar fascia. So keep watching, and we're going to show you how to get better today. most common causes are number one fifth toe pain so when you look at this guy right here the fifth toe it's a little toe right here it takes a lot of damage so it can very easily get squished up against the side of your shoe squeeze against the fourth toe you can get taylor's bunion problems you can get fifth metatarsal problems and this bump right here everybody worries about this this is the styloid process so even outside of uh, just bone pain, take a look at here. There is a lot of stuff going on here. So you have your pinky toe. So see this nerve right here? That's called your sural nerve right here. This muscle right here, your abductor digiti mini me. So see that coming in? It goes from the heel up to the fifth toe. Uh, up here you have your flexor tendons. Uh, you have your extensor tendons right up here. You have your perineal tendons. These are a big one right here. So your perineus brevis inserts into the root of your fifth metatarsal styloid process and your perineus longus goes to the big toe. Up here you have your superficial perineal nerve. All these things can get injured. So this is stuff you have to look out for. One of the options to take care of this pain is start icing. So the rest ice compression elevation technique. So if your foot's hurting, don't keep punishing it. Take a break. Number two, start icing that foot. So 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off. This can really make a big difference for your foot. Your initial pain will start to go away. Compression. These are compression socks, uh, an ace bandage, something to keep the swelling down. And number four, elevate it. When you're relaxing and watching some TV, keep it elevated and the swelling will come down. The biggest thing is really the ice and taking it easy if you did cause damage before. Medications don't really make a lot of sense for outside of the foot pain. Anti-inflammatories are really good. Maybe like a Motrin or an ibuprofen. Uh, taking about 400 milligrams every four to six hours can be good initially, but I'm not a big fan of medications. This is something to numb the pain a little bit rather than stop the pain. So the number one biggest thing is people start physical activities too aggressively. So the number one reason we see people with fifth toe pain outside of the foot pain is it's springtime, the weather's beautiful out there, and they start walking and running a lot. You really have to ease into it, especially if you haven't been exercising quite a bit in the past. Take a look at what's happening to the outside of the foot here. Look at that. It's turning out. And right there, it's turning out. That's the fifth toe and the outside of the foot getting crushed against the side of the shoe. Did you ever hear of the weekend warrior? You can't just start training a marathon by running the marathon. First, you got to run a few hundred yards, then ease into it. So definitely ease into activities, uh, especially if you've put on a few pounds. If you're stiff, make sure you're doing enough stretching in the morning. Working on your hips, your lower back, your hamstrings, your calf muscles, this makes a huge amount of difference for you. This could even be the number one biggest and most proven thing. Because if you're tight through the back of your legs and your back, you twist out in your feet. And this causes pressure against the outside of your shoe. So make sure you get flexible before you exercise. The next best thing is get yourself a good pair of shoes. So take a look at this. Every shoe right here as you go straight, it starts to curve in the front. So look at this curvature right here. That's where your fifth toe and outside of your foot presses. So in most shoes without good supportive orthotics, your foot twists out 
and rubs against the side of your shoe. So the better the shoe, the more support, the less your fifth toe presses out to the side. Also, there's something called straight last shoes. So if you look and you buy a shoe that's straighter, so this one is curving in. The curving in portion is meant more for support, but if your fifth toe is really hurting, try and find a shoe that's called a straight last shoe. This will prevent your fifth toe from impinging against the outside, especially that bump called your styloid process. Just to show you again, the outside of the shoe it can press against this bump and this bump and this bump right here, especially if your foot twists out to the side every time you take a step. So here's your shoe, you're slamming against the edge. That is what's causing your repetitive outside the foot pain, especially if you're tight through your hamstring, your calf muscle, your lower back, if you have sore knees, your foot twists out to take advantage of that tightness and it crushes your fifth toe and the outside of your foot. Gel pads. So fifth toe gel pads, styloid process gel pads, modifications and padding inside your shoe. These can all take a lot of pressure off um, your fifth toe, your fifth metatarsal, and the outside of your foot. Another one, an ankle brace. Ankle braces, if you sprain your ankle, if you have perineal uh, tendon problems, uh, an ankle brace can really take a lot of pressure off the outside of your foot. Get flexible. Drop as much weight as possible. Get in as good a shape as possible. Sometimes the best thing to do is not to start running right away. Maybe cycling, maybe swimming. Drop that initial first five to 10 pounds if your feet are hurting. Five to 10 pounds is really three to four times more pressure on your feet when you land during a running position. So losing five pounds is really 20% less weight on or 20 pounds less weight on your feet so if your feet just aren't up to it yet lose some weight and then get back into it so that brings us back to the idea of easing into it number one if you have a nerve issue if you have joint pain or arthritis what can work really well immediately if you're in a lot of pain is something called a diagnostic injection. So sometimes a little bit of numbing agent can diagnose if it's really the joint that's hurting. One of the real benefits in the office is coming in and getting an x-ray taken. This can really make a difference in making sure that you just don't have any broken bones or any bone changes. Number two, the tightness. If you're tight through your hamstrings, your lower back, your hips, your knees, starting some physical therapy can make a huge difference for you. That can make a massive overall difference. You can start stretching at home. Even looking up other YouTube videos, look up your hamstrings, your lower back, your hips, that can make a massive difference for you. Get yourself a great pair of shoes and biased advice, as a podiatrist, get yourself a pair of orthotics. So these don't have to be expensive. These are like 20, 30 bucks. Everybody can afford them. These will prevent the outside of your foot from hitting against the side of your shoe. It'll prevent your foot from buckling out. Orthotics and good shoes, just like weight loss, just like flexibility, all compound to take a lot of pressure off the outside of your foot. So in summary, for outside of the foot pain, uh, start icing right away. Rest, ice, compression, elevation. Get yourself a great pair of shoes. Get yourself a pair of orthotics. Get flexibility through your lower back, your hips, your hamstrings, your calf muscles. This prevents your foot from stretching out to the side, hitting up against the side of your shoe. 95% of outside of the foot problems are due to your foot twisting out in your shoe to the side like this so get that pressure off the outside of your foot and fall underneath this is not an act i hope we were able to help you